<laughs> yeah, just as I hit star day, Chevy. Uh, how you doing, brothers and sisters? You get to see a big furry belly to start it all off. Come here, monkey man. Come here, my man. Aw, oh, you're a good boy. How you doing, brothers and sisters? I pray you're all staying blessed. This beautiful little animal, Chevy. Oh. <laughs> How's it going, guys? How you doing, buddy? Hey. Give him a kiss. That's nice. You're a good boy. Okay. Well, maybe he'll sit down, maybe he won't, but I'm going to keep going here, so stick with me, brothers and sisters. I just wanted to talk about a couple of teachings here. I don't think you want a shot of his bum. Chevy. They don't want to see your bum. No. <laughs> so there was a couple teachings I wanted to talk about, and, um, and then I'm going to follow it up with something that happened to me. Praise be to God. And uh, first, I want to start off by uh, saying the Lord's Prayer with you. So say it with me, please. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. I apologize for the shoddy camera work, you guys. <laughs> Chevy just turned the camera around, and I love him. Come have a seat here, buddy. Come sit here with me, please. You want to grab a seat? I, um, I'm going to talk about a couple things and, and, uh, and then explain to you how this applies to me, but I have had two giant confirmations Aw, you're a good man. And I saw a video done by uh, Matthew, Hot Man a Minute, and he was talking about how we need to pray over everything. And I know this sounds like common knowledge to most of us, but we literally need to pray over every single thing. Pray over our food. Pray over our clothes, pray over our animals. And not only is the discipline very important, God is forever teaching us discipline. Because when it comes time to act, discipline in hearing his word is what's going to get us through it. And so Matthew in the video uh, was explaining about how he was um, he felt complacent to, to praying. And because of that, uh, him and his wife ended up getting sick. And we know the reaches of our enemy is within everything that's of the world. We know that. And yes, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. But we need to continuously be in prayer so that the blood of Jesus Christ washes over all that we are and everything that we have so that we are protected. And again, the discipline in doing this and sincere and sincerely coming begging at his feet for for help and protection is getting us used to doing it constantly all the time. And there is something that Matthew had a piece of scripture that I'm going to read to you actually. It's Joshua chapter 9 Oh, sorry, Joshua chapter 7, verse 11. And right there, I just thought, 7-Eleven. It's, it's, think of 7-Eleven. What, what do you think of when you think of 7-Eleven? I think of the store and all the things that are inside of that store and just the amount of poison that's inside of that store. And verse, chapter 7, verse 11 is, Israel has sinned and they have also transgressed my, transgressed my covenant which I commanded them for they have even taken of the accursed thing and have also stolen and dissembled also. And they have put it even among their own stuff. So because they chose to take things that were, were cursed, 
full of sin, you guys. And think about all the things that enter into our lives, whether it be food, anything, clothing, every little everything, this that's on my body right now. We don't know under what conditions that this was formed. Now, we know the what the power of money does to brothers and sisters and what lengths they will go to to, to earn that power. And so, therefore, most things that are created to gain power and money are, are through the act of sin and the things that are associated with it in order for it to happen. So even food, the treatment of the animal, uh, the clothing, the treat, treatment of the person, uh, who's making it, the conditions that they're in, and all the suffering that's associated with that. Well, that's not all by accident, brothers and sisters. It's part of a ritual in order to transfer that over into that item so that it enters into your life. And we just need to get used to praying over everything uh, so that Jesus may take away from whatever is associated with that item so that we're protected. So I thought that was an amazing uh, teaching and how it translated into Matthew's life because he's he's not feeling well because he started getting lackadaisical and therefore our beautiful father wanted to teach him a lesson by allowing him to get sick because he didn't continue to do the things that he's been taught and the discipline that he was supposed to have with those items. The second teaching um, was... Uh, a video and I'm going to make sure that I, I tag in the community post both these videos so you can take a look at it and, and uh, leave a comment tell me what you think um, but sister Linda um, she posted a video uh, about how our Savior didn't come to abolish the law but to fulfill it and what that meant and it's an hour-long video very insightful um, sum it all up you guys it's everything that we know and that's you know jesus didn't come to get rid of the ten commandments and that includes all the commandments that uh you know like even the the sabbath that we continue to have these various conversations on and again the, the pharisees used these laws because they felt that that was their ticket in it wasn't about the love and the discipline and the, the showing our father how much we love him because we want to do the more so if I just do this then it's it's a ticket in so as we see the world operate in the physical and now knowing with our scales removed from our eyes being reborn through Jesus Christ we understand that things are all done through the spiritual and that includes all of the commandments and how we should feel about them and their moral value and why they were taught to us in the first place and that's so we can learn how to get closer to God it's not about the act of doing the Ten Commandments. It's about the result of why we do them. And that is so that we can get closer to Jesus Christ. Amen, you guys? And so while we're arguing about why and when and, and the legalism of it all, and uh, we're missing the point and the purpose of, of why we have them. And that's to teach us how to be, you guys. And so we have an obligation because we love God, not because it's forced, but because we come to him willingly, lovingly, as a bride to the groom, to do the right thing always. And again, out of love, not out of, you better do it or you're going to get, you know, you'll get taught a lesson. We need to be thankful when we get taught lessons. It's that, uh, you know, every time a child tries to stick his finger in a light socket, well, we're going to have to up the ante more and more every time to make sure that that child doesn't die. And, and the same goes with God with us. He does not want us to die the second death, you guys. He doesn't want us to perish. So he needs to teach us lessons so that we learn. So the more we can uh, push our pride aside and bring Jesus into our lives and understand that these lessons are for our own good, and stop looking at them as a detriment, as, oh, I can't believe he's doing this to me, and I just, nothing goes my way, and I hear a lot of that lately, you know, the poor me situation, and yes, we all have moments of weakness, that's okay, what's more important is getting back up through Jesus Christ, and looking at that moment and going, you know what, I needed this, I was thinking about it the last couple of days, brothers and sisters, about tribulation, 
and how everybody, you know, you know, wants to be raptured away and, and uh, how amazing and beautiful that would be. I have this feeling I'm going to go through tribulation. I, I, I feel it in my spirit and it is so strong that I know it to be true because he's never led me astray. He's only told me the truth and I believe that that's what's coming. Chevy, you're the cutest. He's cleaning his little face. I know. Squirrel, eh? Just right away, get switched to something else. But the more and more I think about it, brothers and sisters, and my family situation and the people that God is so blessed to have put around me, we need tribulation. We need it. That's what tribulation is, brothers and sisters. We quickly give the, the enemy too much credit and telling or, or, or giving him credit and, and thinking that he is the one responsible for all of it and that everything that's associated with that is fear. But if our father chooses to put us through tribulation, it is a gift. It is a blessing because you need it. And I have this feeling that that's what's in store for my family and I. And so therefore, I am being prepared spiritually through Jesus Christ to understand what that will possibly look like, how it will feel, and that knowing that with him in my corner, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I get this visual of all of these arrows being shot by the enemy raining down and then them hitting this, this shield around me and just falling to the wayside. And that's what he can do for you. The ability with faith to move mountains, brothers and sisters, you are protected. I want you to know that. And if we are going to go through tribulation, know that it is a blessing. There's no other way to look at it. If you have fear over it, if you're worried about it, if you think it's a detriment while you're going through it, it will consume you because this is a test about faith and understanding what is true faith, brothers and sisters. Seriously, ask yourself that question right now. What is true faith? True faith is knowing that God has your best interest in mind at all moments of your existence. Again, back to beautiful Job. Out of all these things, Job, that I have done perfect, I've got this one thing wrong in your life? I don't think so, you guys. I don't think so. Not one thing in your life has he made a mistake. So your responsibility, the only gift that you can give back to him through your free will is to give him your time your faith in knowing that I love you so much, I trust you so much that I know that everything that is happening to me in my life today is because you want it to happen because you love me, because I need it. And that includes tribulation, brothers and sisters. So I want you to sit back and evaluate your life and make sure that before everything you do, you pray over it, whether it be food or your job or whatever situation, as soon as you wake up, before you go to bed, and what is that teaching us to do, brothers and sisters? And that's to have a relationship with God, a relationship with Jesus, so that we're constantly communicating with him. So what happens when we have him full of, when he is full in us, what other room is left for anything else? There is no other room for anything. So if you can take your day constantly, eyes on Jesus, the enemy does not have a chance to get in. That's why he's going to walk about like a roaring lion, waiting, 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 waiting. And the moment that you step out from that time sharing with Jesus, he's going to, he's throwing darts at you to lure you out. The only reason why he paces is because you're protected. And so the moment that you, you brother, you sister decide to come out from underneath that protection is the moment that he can attack you and God will allow him to, ta to attack you. Why? Because he loves you. Because he wants to teach you that it's better under his hands than it is back at, than it is out in the wilderness, allowing him to attack you, to test you. Remember, the devil can't kill you, brothers and sisters. He cannot harm you. Unless God allows it to happen, the devil cannot do anything. So therefore, if God allows it, that means he knows you are ready. Do you think God will ever put you through something that you're not ready for? Ever? Once? Will he ever throw something that you're not ready for at you once? I don't believe that. I have faith in knowing that everything that has happened to you, 
to this very second as you watch this video has been with perfect purpose because you are ready so that you are ready to move on to the next level, the next, next test, the next exam, the next lesson. And he will continue until you've figured out the important lesson that he wants to teach you. He will grab you by the hand, bring you back to the beginning of that lesson, get you to study it again, and then put you through the test. And if you fall down again, he'll bring you gently back to the beginning. And then sometimes he'll nudge you a little heavier to the beginning because he wants you to learn. And it means that it's that important to him. And more importantly, the relationship between you and two gets stronger and stronger as those lessons go on. I'm going to share something that happened with me, guys. And if we can't be honest with each other, ourselves, God knows our heart. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you think you can hide, whether you think it's a big deal. It doesn't matter. This is why we need to pray and meditate and search over everything that we do through Jesus Christ and allow him to wash us with his blood so that we, we may continue to walk on the straight and narrow. I, um, on my way back, I had car problems from visiting my dad and we ended up having to spend uh, an extra night in a, a, a city called Thunder Bay, which is about 14 hours outside of, of, of where I live. So a fairly decent drive in the conditions that we're in. And, uh, so a check engine light went on at about, you know, 50 kilometers, uh, outside of, of the city. And, and so, my wife and I uh, and daughter decided we're going to turn back to Thunder Bay because what a blessing it was for that to happen there because the biggest city from where I had left till the time I had gone home it was this city. So praise be to God. So we got there and because it was uh, New Year's weekend, nothing was open. Um, I looked up and found that there was a dealership because the vehicle still is under warranty um, that the dealership was close to uh, a hotel that we were going to stay at. Now, the hotel was a little more money than we would have wanted to spend on our trip, um, but we understood that because of the situation, we just went ahead and did it. Now, there's a lot of factors that happened, um, you know, as far as food, and, and my, my uh, daughter's got uh, different dietary needs because she has a, uh, a, an intolerance to, to certain foods. And uh, again, that's for a different video. I also know that spiritual warfare in itself and another exact reason of why we need to pray over our food, brothers and sisters. Now, because of all these things that happened the next day, um, the dealerships were actually closed the next day because uh, they had a, a loo day because of the holiday, which bounced over into the Monday. Now, my wife, uh, by the grace of God, has started a new job, and we needed to get home to make sure that she was prepared to start this new adventure. And so... We uh, we decided to take it to another shop, one of the only other shops that were open, and they ended up looking the vehicle over and scanning the engine code to find out what it was. And, uh, you know, more or less just told me that, you know, they couldn't help me because they didn't have anybody to look it over. And um, that was tough for me because uh, knowing that we're from out of town and needed help, um, you know, it... Uh, it didn't sit well with me and uh, I got upset. I got upset by it. And I, uh, I talked to the manager about it and just said, Hey, you know, we're trying to get home, explain the situation. And so he, he did ended up bringing me back into the shop and doing what he could. Um, it took for me to call back to uh, the dealership here in town to get some advice. And then we, uh, we limped it home. So 14 hours later, we ended up getting home at one in the morning and uh, praise be to God. We got here safe and sound. Now, um, because the vehicle is under warranty, um, there's certain charges that I, I didn't need to um, accrue because they would have never have happened if, if the vehicle, nothing happened to the vehicle. So the two charges that I, I've tried to get a hold of General Motors for, uh, one is the check engine charge, which is $150. And we're at this point where, you know, money is, is, is tight. Uh, my wife hasn't worked in well over a year. And, um, but I know all things are given to us. I do know that, but the enemy does swoop in and try to take you off that path from time to time. The other charge is, is the, the hotel charge. And in my mind, I'm was going to get back both of those charges. Praying on it, brothers and sisters, God has shown me that it, it was, it wouldn't be right of me to, to try to get that money back for the hotel room. And I heard it in, in my spirit, him tell me that you were going to stay at a hotel anyways. 
And whether it be a little more money or not, or whatever you had to pay for, um, you know, the food or however that went, it, it that doesn't matter. I should be thankful that he took care of my family and I. And not to worry about the money and to worry about how, you know, I was done wrong at the shop or any of those things. It doesn't matter. I'm not, I, I, I took my eyes off Jesus Christ, brothers and sisters. Instead of being thankful and happy that somebody actually took us in to help me, I was more worried about the $150 that I wasn't um, getting the service for, which was ridiculous. And the more I prayed on it, I heard God tell me, you can try to get back that $150 for the check engine light. That is no problem. But as far as the hotel, I don't want you to get that money back. It was so much so, brothers and sisters, and these are things that I don't want you to ever, ever, ever lose sight of. When I first left the hotel, I failed to grab the receipt, which should have been sign number one. My wife reminded me, did you get the, did you get the receipt? I said, no, I forgot. So then I decided, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to email them. I'm going to call them, sorry, and get them to email the receipt. So I did. I called them and I got the receipt. She sent it to me. Now, when I made the call today to the to the to General Motors, um, I needed to hand in these receipts. And as God was reminding me I shouldn't be doing this about the hotel, I went into my email and it was gone, you guys. The email is gone. And I don't mean gone. I mean, if I would have deleted that by accident, which I will admit I've done that in the past. It would be in my deleted. This is just from January 2nd, you guys. It's not like it's 100 days or 200 days to where eventually your, your deleted, you know, clean themselves out. I went and searched in the deleted and sure enough, they weren't there either. And so I even typed in the name of the place where we stayed. No, nope, nothing came up. Only God. Only God would get rid of it for me to take away the temptation from me. And I'm very, very thankful for him. Now, I went as so far as to call again to get it again. And I got it. It is sitting in my inbox right now. The last two confirmations, the last two studies that I did. Thank you, God, for showing me that that's wrong. And that I have a choice. I have a freed will choice right now to do the right thing and to not submit that. Or go against what he wants for me and do it for what? $150. Because the devil has whispered to me and told me that you need that $150. Bucks. You don't have a lot of money coming in right now. Your wife's not working. Do you see how he operates, brothers and sisters? And the purpose of today's video is two things that I want to teach you right now. That I want to show you. And that is to understand that every little thing that happens to you. God removing that email could very easily be dismissed as a coincidence or you deleted it. And there you go. That's the enemy. That's the second lesson. Constantly whispering in your ear, trying to justify your sin. And although you may not think it is a sin at the time because you think it's owed to you, that would have been stealing, brothers and sisters, because I knew in my spirit that I was going to stay at a hotel anyways. We ended up not, we ended up driving from Thunder Bay back to Regina, but that's a choice that we made at the time after it happened. We were going to stop. So therefore, I would have been trying to steal $150. And that is how crafting and disgusting our enemy is. Always have Jesus at the forefront of everything that you do, brothers and sisters. Always. Sealed by the blood of the Lamb so that we continue to look at every situation and ask ourselves, what would Jesus Christ do right now? This isn't about a woe is me at all. Brothers and sisters, we need to share our testimonies with one another so that we understand what we're up against and the things that we need to do to combat them. And the only thing that is going to help us, the only thing that is going to save us is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So anyways, guys, I just wanted to share with you today. I pray you're all staying blessed. I love you all dearly. Keep smiling, you guys. These stripes that we have, they're, they're being earned right now. Because the things that we are going through is refining us, refining our spirits by the trial of fire. Praise be to God. So embrace them. 
Be thankful for your stripes. Be thankful for your tribulation. And know that whatever, whatever this day is being brought to you, it's been brought by God and it's for your own good. God bless you all. I love you so much. Talk to you soon. Take care.